Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Fifth Grade Math. We'll continue working with dividing fractions. Here we will divide fraction by another fraction. And you'll see that it isn't really very hard because we've been building our skills step by step. So what if we have the fraction 1 half and we're dividing by 1 fourth? Well, now that you know how we've handled it in the last section, it shouldn't be a, a huge surprise to you how we're going to do this. All we're going to do is we're going to leave the first fraction alone we're going to change the division to multiplication and we'll take the second fraction and flip it over. That's all we're doing. Then we multiply the tops, one times four is four. Multiply the bottoms, two times one is two. And then we try to simplify, but then we see four over two is the same as four divided by two. And of course that's two. So the answer to this, if you take one half and divide it by a quarter, it goes in two times. That makes sense. I mean, if you think about it, if you start out with a half of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you just cut it in half. And what you start with is a half of the sandwich. How many times will one-fourth of a sandwich go into that? It's only going to go two times. And that kind of makes sense from everyday experience. So let's see what happens when we have one-third divided by uh, two-sevenths. One-third divided by two-sevenths. Well, same sort of thing. We're going to take the first fraction, leave it alone, take the division, change it to multiplication, take this fraction, flip it over. So it'll become seven halves. And then we will multiply tops. One times seven is seven. Three times two is six. Now that's the answer, but that's improper. So what we want to do is divide and see how many times will six go into seven. That can only go one time with the remainder of one left over, and we always write it over the denominator. So one and one sixth. So if we take a third of a pizza, how many times will two sevenths fit into there? Well, it'll go one whole time and a little bit more, one sixth more. That's how you interpret the results there. What if we have one fifth and divided by two fifths? One fifth divided by two fifths. So it's the same sort of story. What we're doing is we'll take the first fraction and we'll leave it alone, one fifth. We'll take this and change it to multiplication. We'll take this and flip it over. We'll flip it upside down, five halves. And then now we just do multiplication. 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. So we're about ready to circle that, but then we notice, hey, wait a minute, we can simplify this by dividing the top by 5 and the bottom by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And so you have 1 half. All right, 1 half. So just cruising on down here, we're just getting a little bit more practice each time. What if you have 7 eighths divided by 1 fourth? Well, the first fraction stays alone or stays untouched, but we change this to multiplication and we flip this over, 4 over 1. All right, so then we take 7 times 4, we multiply that, we get 28, and 8 times 1 gives us 8. So now we have 28 over 8, and we try to simplify that. We do see that they're both even numbers, so we could simplify it right now, but we also notice it's improper. So how many times will 8 go into 24? 8 times 3 is 24, and 8 times 4 is 32. That's too many. So 8 times 3 will be 24. It'll go 3 times. The difference between 28 and 24 is just a remainder of 4, and we always write it over the 8. Now you see we have two even numbers here because we had two even numbers to begin with, so we still need to simplify it. We can divide the top by 4 and the bottom by 4, and we will get 3. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is two, so we get three and one half. So if we have seven eighths of a pizza, which is almost a whole pizza, and we divide it uh, by one fourth, that will go three and a half times. Just a few more here.